tonight, Hurricane Howard, the highlight of the Pacific. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. So the main feature of today's tropics worldwide is Hurricane Howard which uh, intensified earlier to reach category 1 status and is looking pretty decent right now. Uh, we'll check that out properly in just a few moments. There's also several areas of interest that we're still looking at. Let's get into them in the Atlantic. That area of interest that we've still got on the radar. Still low to moderate chances, 20% in 48 hours, according to National Hurricane Center, they're still higher in the five day period, although model support is waning a little bit. In the Eastern Pacific, Howard of course, moving off the, the uh, well, further away from the Baja California Peninsula, and two areas of interest behind it, um, well near it, and one in the Central Pacific of course, which we've been monitoring for some days now. And in the Western Pacific, it's just about getting there, this broad area of interest that we're now giving a high chance of development for. The JMA have already gone for tropical depression with this. It does potentially have a closed circulation, although convection is not over the center. And in the Indian Ocean, there's no areas of interest at this time. Everything's been called off in this basin, as it should be once again for the time of year, after that little bit of activity that we had in the Indian Ocean. Well then let's check the latest satellite imagery and you'll notice in the Atlantic that there's a lot of general disturbed weather across the Gulf of Mexico and in the Western Caribbean. Thunderstorms blowing up across Cuba and also along the western coast of Florida but out in the open Atlantic things looking fairly quiet except in the uh, lower tropical zone towards the equator where you'll see the intratropical convergence zone possibly spitting out that potential tropical cyclone. It's quite easy to see what's dominating the picture in the Eastern Pacific, and that is quite clearly Hurricane Howard, which is well off the uh, Baja California Peninsula there. Dry air is just off there, and it's going to get fairly close to that fairly soon. Uh, but it's going to be cold sea surface temperatures that will eventually spell the demise of Howard. Already it's only over marginal temperatures and that will start to decrease substantially as it drops off the cliff here. Uh, as it moves over much cooler waters will eventually drop down to only 20 degrees. But right now it is looking good as you can see on this satellite imagery loop um, on the various different kinds of imagery that we've got here. Uh, I always like how it looks on the visible uh, with the uh, overlay of the infrared once it's done properly. And you'll see that the convective cloud tops have been uh, rebounding a little bit after they were fairly weak earlier when the eye first formed. But its structure has been getting consistently better it would appear on those latest satellite imagery frames. So high end category 1 is not out of the question. Western Pacific, once again you can see that huge disturbance in the South China Sea, its influence extending all across Vietnam for instance and for mass massive chunks of the Philippines, but its convection is still displaced to the east of where we're looking for. Whether it's gotten closed circulation or not yet is still up for debate as well. Uh, so we'll just see how that one goes, it could get a name um, and it's actually higher chance considering it's already got 45 mile an hour winds. Indian Ocean looking extremely quiet now and that's uh, obviously a good thing that disturbs though moving inland over India probably delivering a lot of rain there right now and over the uh, southern hemisphere things looking very quiet across Australia, New Zealand and the Pacific Islands oh, a little bit of convection bubbling up there towards uh, that would be east of uh, Samoa so looking at sea surface temperatures right now as I mentioned you can see that Howard there is uh, just hanging on to those 26 degrees Celsius waters and then they drop off massively as it moves west northwestwards. In the Atlantic Gulf of Mexico very warm over that 20% area you can see the temperatures are good 28 degrees generally. If it stays low latitude it will stay with good sea surface temperatures throughout. We'll check what the models are throwing up on that one shortly. 
And in the Western Pacific, of course you'll notice the Indian Ocean warm temperatures, but the 70% chance we've given there, uh, you can see the temperatures are very warm, 30 degrees plus, even touching 32 degrees in the Gulf of Tonkin. And generally across the whole Western Pacific, sea surface temperatures are extremely warm, 30 degrees, quite commonplace in the Philippine Sea, the northern extent, and across the Ryukyu Islands of Japan, and for a chunk of the eastern coast of China, which you don't often see. Uh, it is well above average up there, as you'll note on the anomaly charts. It's the subtropical and the northerly zones, the mid latitudes, that are extremely above average across the Atlantic and Pacific, much closer to average in the tropical zones, and obviously below average in the central Pacific, with that La Nina still in force. The Atlantic slightly above average, oceanic heat content looks like this, really building in in the Caribbean Sea, if anything enters that area it's going to light up and it's really starting to increase along the Gulf Stream as well. The Eastern Pacific coastline is still looking pretty decent now compared to how it used to look. Gulf of California getting in there as well with some higher amounts. Western Pacific though of course is that massive powerhouse but it's not yet properly delivered uh, in terms of its accumulated cyclone energy this year so far. So let's check the Atlantic and you'll see this area of interest. The GFS uh, throws it across the Atlantic there and it uh, becomes an extremely large um, wind field on the northern side. It tries to wrap that round the uh, southern side to become a full circulation. But there are doubts creeping in to whether this system will eventually get to form or not. Uh, but at the moment it's looking pretty close. Look at the Eastern Pacific then and you'll see what happens with Howard and how that there is another area of interest behind it that becomes a tropical cyclone in the short range on the GFS so chances are starting to creep up on that one. Models really only taking to it during the course of today but it does have uh, several other models starting to support it as well so those chances could uh, creep up quite quickly over the next 24 to 48 hours. Philippine region, uh, sorry, no, the Central Pacific region, uh, we're looking at this area of interest once again, uh, which looks like it has a chance still to get there, but chances have gone down due to uncertainty really, and GFS showing that it's going to struggle to get itself together, uh, but there will be some instances where it might come close to getting to tropical cyclone status and the long-awaited Hone. And in the Western Pacific then, uh, we're looking at the South China Sea, this extremely broad system. The main question is whether it manages to get that center of circulation going. And then with the convection over the center, that's another prerequisite for tropical cyclone naming. We've got to see whether that manages to happen for a decent amount of time. So it's going to be a toss up that one, but it is looking more and more likely as time goes on. Um, and it looks like it's going to have around 30 hours to tighten up before it reaches the south coast of China. Looking at the same region, you can see the rainfall potential from this, which is very high. When you look towards those red areas there, as they build and build towards that seven day period, you'll see that those red areas, that's 10 inches of rain or higher, 250 millimeters, spread out over an enormous part of China, a population earlier estimated to be of around 87 million underneath potentially 10 inches of rainfall. So that could be a massive flooding event for Southern China. Let's look towards the longer range, days 5 through 10. Uh, we can keep looking at that system in the Atlantic as it dies away, but still it's a very broad area. Uh, eventually gets uh, squashed towards the Sargasso Sea and then gets sucked up towards the northeast and might have a little shot at developing a second time as it would be into a tropical cyclone uh, as it moves along the front. So we'll see whether it manages to get that manages to get that chance as it moves towards Nova Scotia in the long range. Looking at the Eastern Pacific, you can see that second system then becoming a hurricane now. Um, somewhat similar to Howard, just a little bit further towards the west. and looks like it holds on for quite a bit longer as well. I'm not sure with those sea surface temperatures that it will manage that. And then another system forming behind it towards the end of that 10 day period and intensifying rather quickly as it emerges along the uh, eastern um, 
along the western coast of central Mexico and then moving off for quite a smaller system and might have a chance at hurricane status. And with all the serious stuff out the way, you can take a look at the Force 13 merch store, scan the barcode and it will take you straight through to all of our products uh, such as animations and the still waiting for Hone t-shirt whose days might be lasting a little bit longer. We'll have to wait and see. Now into the Silly Range. This is what the Atlantic looks like as we enter the later part of August and uh, the Long Range GFS chucks out another tropical cyclone from Cape Verde. And oh boy, it becomes a significant hurricane, but that is very far out, right at the end of the, uh, the timeline and that's on day 16 so I would not put any faith into that at all but of course as soon as this appears people are going to go absolutely crazy over something that probably won't happen. However in the western pacific if there's any weenies still over there uh, there's another system that decides it wants to form in the long range on the GFS and I have even less faith in this one when you take a look at what it intends to do with it a powerful typhoon pushing through the northern Mariana Islands right at the very end of that 16 day loop um, and another system to its west forming over the northern Philippine Sea approaching the Japanese Ryukyu Islands tries to get itself together and looks like it succeeds there at least for a brief time as well. So on this day on August the 9th 1980 we had Hurricane Allen reaching its third and final Category 5 peak. What a beast of a storm that was. Um, Hurricane Isis in the Eastern Pacific, Tropical Storm Marge just forming, and the remnants of Lex, which were approaching the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia. But Allen, of course, would have stolen the show on this day and on many previous days of this year, uh, 1980. On this date, made a landfall as Category 3 in Southern Texas. So, taking a look at the upcoming names in the Atlantic, we've got Danielle next up. In the Eastern Pacific, it's uh, really producing the storms this year. Yvette is next up. I'd like to tell you uh, that the next name in the Central Pacific is Hode. In the Western Pacific, Mulan is next up. The North Indian Ocean will see Citrang. Just want to point out that 71% of the ACE in the Northern Hemisphere so far this year has been produced by the Eastern Pacific in a La Nina year. Uh, something fishy's going on. In the Australian region, Darien is the next name. The Southwest Indian Ocean will start with Ashley this winter, summer down there. And in the South Pacific, the next name on the list is Harley. That's all for tonight. We'll have another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow night.